Welcome to Civil Engineering for Learners by Dr. K. Aravinthan. Waste Management Pollution Prevention and Waste Minimization Pollution prevention is the use of materials, processes, or practices that reduce or eliminate the generation of pollutants or wastes at the source. It includes practices that reduce the use of hazardous and non-hazardous materials, energy, water, or other resources as well as those that protect natural resources through conservation or more efficient use. Pollution prevention is the maximum feasible reduction of all wastes generated at production sites. It involves the judicious use of resources through source reduction, energy efficiency, reuse of input materials, and reduces water consumption. Waste minimization means the feasible reduction of hazardous waste that is generated prior to treatment, storage, and disposal. It is defined as any source reduction or recycling activity that results in the reduction of the total volume of hazardous waste or toxicity of hazardous waste or both. Practices that are considered in waste minimization include recycling, source separation, product substitution, manufacturing process changes, and the use of less toxic raw materials. The factors that can contribute to pollution prevention and waste minimization are management support and employee participation, a clear commitment by management through policy, communications, and resources to waste minimization and pollution prevention is essential to earn the dedication of all employees. For this to happen, a formal policy statement must be drafted and adopted. Creative, progressive, and responsible leadership will serve to develop an environmental policy. However, the total employee workforce will need to be involved to realize the fruits of the planning. The second, training. Employees must be provided with formal and on-the-job training to increase awareness of operating practices that reduce both solid and hazardous waste generation. The training program should include the industry's compliance requirements, which may be found in the waste management policies, occupational health, and safety requirements. Additionally, training on waste minimization and pollution prevention is necessary. 3. Waste Audits A program of waste audits at the departmental level will provide a systematic and periodic survey of the industries designed to identify areas of potential waste reduction. The audit program includes the identification of hazardous wastes, their sources, and the prioritization of various waste reduction actions to be undertaken. Evaluation of some technically, economically, and ecologically feasible approaches to waste minimization and pollution prevention. Development of an economic comparison of waste minimization and pollution prevention options and evaluation of their results. 4. Good operating practices. These practices would include, at a minimum, material handling improvements, scheduling improvements, spill and leak prevention, preventive maintenance, corrective maintenance, material-slash-waste tracking or inventory control, and waste stream segregation, according to the toxicity, type of contaminant, and physical state. Facility operations need to be examined to determine whether changes in practices and procedures will result in the generation of non-hazardous or less hazardous waste, or waste reduced in toxicity or volume. Material Substitution Practices the purpose of these practices is to find substitute materials, which are less hazardous than those currently utilized and which result in the generation of waste in smaller quantities and or of less toxicity. The specifics to be considered in this context include the substitution of non-toxic materials for toxic ones, distillation or evaporation of water-based chemical end products, reclamation, and reuse of common solvents, use of non-chromate cleaners as a standard part of doing business to generate non-hazardous end products. 6. Technological Modification Practices These practices should be oriented towards process and equipment modifications to reduce waste generation. These can range from changes that can be implemented in a matter of days at low cost to the replacement of process equipment involving large capital expenditures. 7. Recycling Options These options are characterized as used slash reuse and resource recovery techniques. Use and reuse practices involve the return of a waste material either to the originating process or to another process as a substitute for an input material. 
Reclamation practices tender waste to another company. 8. Surplus Chemical Waste Exchange Options Inter- and interdepartment chemical exchange is to be implemented and encouraged by employers slash employees. Material exchanges not only reduce waste but also save money, both are important considerations during times of fiscal crisis. Thank you. Happy learning. See you again.